Well, one of the most interesting questions that we're often asked are what are the risk factors that can cause Waldenstrom's? And I think it's really important to know that this is a disease that has a high uh, hereditary basis. In fact, up to 25% of all patients um, may have either a first or second degree uh, relative with either Waldenstrom's, because we do see in families just Waldenstrom's running through multiple generations, but also other types of B cell malignancies, including CLL, we see other types of lymphomas, uh, as well as multiple myeloma. For this reason, we believe that in many patients, there is really a hereditary or genetic basis. But the other 75% of patients who don't have this kind of uh, hereditary background, uh, there's been a lot of speculation about rheumatoid uh, diseases, you know, possibly predisposing. We know, for instance, people that have Sjogren's disease, which is an autoimmune disease, uh, have a very high, you know, um, uh, likelihood or predisposition to Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. Uh, so this has also been discussed. And chronic uh, infections uh, potentially might also be, you know, at the heart of some of these cases. But in reality, you know, the genetic basis for those uh, patients remains to be discovered. So monoclonal gammopathy of un undetermined significance or unknown significance, uh, or MGUS, M-G-U-S, uh, is a precursor state uh, to Waldenstrom's. Um, we believe now that almost all patients go through this um, uh, phase. This is where the IgM monoclonal protein can be detected in the blood. But if you go searching uh, for the disease in the bone marrow, for instance, uh, you're not going to find it. Uh, if you use more clever molecular uh, technologies, like looking for the MYD88 mutation or using uh, flow cytometric analysis, you might start seeing that those cells are there. But at least uh, under the microscope, you know, as a pathologist would be working to look at, you know, for evidence of disease, one wouldn't find it. And this is what is considered uh, MGUS. Uh, to have the IgM protein without really pathological evidence of the disease. Um, these are usually patients whose, uh, you know, course is not well known. Um, if, you know, if, if it's a patient that has MGUS, the probability that they will um, revert to some type of malignant condition is somewhere around 2% per year. And so, you know, if uh, the patient lives with this long enough, they may end up developing a malignant entity. Um, but since this is also a uh, manifestation of older people, most patients with MGUS um, will never really see that happen uh, in their lifetime. When uh, one discusses Waldenstrom's, one has to keep in mind that there can be a, an ethnicity impact. We tend to see um, an increased number of cases among individuals of Ashkenazi uh, descent, Ashkenazi Jewish descent. Um, we also very, very, very rarely see it in African Americans, for instance. Um, and this is kind of interesting because when you look at multiple myeloma, it's exactly the opposite. And there have been some very elaborate studies that have looked at people whose uh, descendancy comes from West Africa uh, compared to Caucasians. And in fact, IgM MGUS, the precursor state of Waldenstrom's, is very, very rare among people of West African descent. And this might be one of the reasons why we see this um, ethnic as well as uh, race predisposition uh, differences.